We serve a God that is not only sees us from the outside, but he sees us on the inside. And if God sees a heart that yearns for him, God will keep you interested. God will keep a nudge and a hook in your spirit to let you know I'm with you. I plan to lead you. I plan to guide you. Just put your trust in me. This is a text. Uh, our text picks up where Jesus has risen from the dead. He has risen from the dead and had given the promise of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, such so that that which he had promised was given. And thank God, how many know that when God makes a promise, he keeps it. Amen. And he had told his disciples, wait for me. He said, I'm sending you the comforter. I'm sending you the keeper. I'm sending you that one that will be called alongside of you. Yes. So that when you need whatever you need, God said, it will be there for you. It begins here with Peter standing up amongst the disciples. He lifted up his voice. Uh, this is after, amen, the day of Pentecost, and they were praying, 120 of them, or more, and more, because it was men and, uh, men and women and children, and they were praying, and God moved in such a miraculous way, way they had seen some things they had never seen before. The Holy Ghost fell in power and great authority. They began to speak in their own language, and the folks stood back and said, these are ignorant men, yet we hear them in our tongue. So God made himself alive. He made himself known to them so that there would be no mistake that God was in the building. How many know when God's in the building? How many know when God is moving, amen, and making himself known? Such was the case on the day of Pentecost. Peter stood up, a fisherman, they said he was a Galilean. They said he was an ignorant fisherman because they didn't feel that he was educated. But Peter stood up in the midst of them and said, listen, men of God, men of Jerusalem, and he said, listen, and Judea, he said, for these are not drunken because they felt that there was such commotion amongst them that were gathered together. People thought they were drunk. People thought they were inspired by something other than the Spirit of God. He said, listen, these men are not drunk. He said, this is that which God has spoken Amen. through the prophet Joel. He said, this is prophecy being revealed. This is the word of God being manifest. And God is so good. God is so, listen, concise that God will give you a word to confirm his promise. Amen. And I'm glad about that because we're living in a time now that I need confirmation from God's word. I need to know what God said and I need to know that I can put my trust in him. This is the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is that which was prophesied 800 to 1,000 years prior that would come and unite. Amen. And bring forth a revival which they had never seen before. The Jews were expecting it. The Gentiles knew nothing about it. All they did was hear what the Jews were waiting for. But thank God for the Holy Ghost that is able to knit us together in love and give us illumination so that we might know the will of God. This was such an announcement because understand this, the Jews were waiting for it because they thought God's spirit would only fall on a select few, meaning Israel. But here you have 120 plus the Jews plus other ones in the crowd and the blessing of God was falling on all them and the same prophets of their uh, uh, latter days, Moses, David, and all the prophets had prophesied these things and God was letting the anointing yes, yes. fall. Glory to God. Yes, yes. God said, no, I'm not discriminating. Wow. I'm letting the anointing fall on whom I desire. Yes. What a mighty God yes. we serve. Yes. Thank you. It was really the dawning of a new age. It was something they had never seen before. And God was bringing about his completion. Amen. His, his plan of salvation for mankind was being addressed in the anointing of God falling on God's people. It was God's great work of redemption so that all men would have opportunity to be saved. 
And so they stood back and marveled. They stood back and questioned. They said, this must be confusion. And Peter said, uh -huh. this is that which was spoken of. These are drunk. These are being blessed right now under the anointing. The refreshing is falling. The revival is falling. Jew and Gentile alike were being, listen, listen, blessed of the Holy Ghost. And God did a great work so that men marveled at what had taken place. I'm glad God does what he does to make a statement. I'm glad God can change your life so much that folk can look at you and say, that's not like you. What happened to you? Such was the case of the Holy Ghost yeah. fall. Amen. And then that were there stood up with a refreshing and an anointing to which they did not have prior to. God let them know this was a new day, a new dawn. Prepare to be amazed in 2020 because God will do it. God will do what he has said. Look at this now. If you look at the 17th verse, uh, he said in the last days, he said, your, your sons and daughters are going to prophesy. Men, uh, young men see visions. Old men dream dreams. He said, I'll pour out my spirit on my handmaids and my servant. They shall prophesy. You'll see wonders in heaven, wonder, uh, earth, wonders in the earth beneath, blood, fire, smoke. He said, the sun shall be turned into blood. He said, and it shall come to pass. I love that it shall come to pass. Because I know that when we fall in line with God's word, it is about to come to pass. Waiting on God, we said this in Sunday school, that waiting on God is rough. It's easier to spell wait than it is to wait. But when we're waiting on God, God has a agenda for us so that in our waiting, it shall come to pass. God said, whatever I promise, I'm going to bring it to pass. Oh, God, prepare to be amazed in 2020 because God will do it because he has the authority to bring it, glory to God, it to pass. Yeah, thank you. Whatever it is, Hallelujah. God has the strength to do it because he's God. You haven't seen anything yet as opposed to what God has planned for your life because if he's still nudging you, he's still pulling on you, he's still pushing you, God said, listen, I'm still allowing the of God to lay on the ground of your heart so that you can be inclined to believe me. Woo, God, regardless of my circumstances, amen, God is about to do something for you in 2020 because God can do it. Prepare to be amazed. Prepare to see something you've never seen before because God can do it. Amen. We don't need any further evidence as believers. The world needs to be convinced, but we don't need any further evidence. We know God can do what he has promised. Amen. Oh, God, I thank, and I thank him Amen. for his promise. Amen. We have no more need as Christians to be convinced the prophecy of God was fulfilled. Amen. First of all, Mary herself was convinced of who Jesus is and was. Mary was convinced. The Bible says in Luke 2 and 19, but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Mary was convinced. An angel visited her. I don't have to understand or be convinced of that anymore. God proved himself faithful. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So God wants to take it one step further. Prepare to be amazed in 2020. Amen. Mary was convinced. That here I am, a maid, never being with a man. And God told me I'm going to have a child. Mary was convinced. And we ought to be convinced by her testimony. Not only Mary, but Joseph was convinced. Yes, yes. Mary on another occasion said, listen, whatever you say as, as a handmaiden of God, he said, so let it be according, oh God, I thank you, to thy word. Yes. Mary was, and listen, Mary come hell or high water because you said what you said God is going to do what he has promised. Amen. Woo, God, I thank you. I'm amazed because God has a way of bringing things, people, circumstances, situations in your life and that you 
what we never expect. Prepare to be amazed in 2020 because God will do it. If he did it for Mary, he did it for Joseph also. Joseph had to be convinced himself of the magnitude and the might of God. Matthew 1 and 20 says, listen, and while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, but that which is conceived in her of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Joseph, prepare to be amazed, because God is about to perfect his promise. Joseph. Yes. Amen. Prepare to be amazed, beloved. In 2020, God will do it. As I was sitting there, the Lord spoke to me and said, listen, every time you sacrifice your life, every time you sacrifice your stuff, he said, I will cause men to give back to you. He said, prepare yourself to be amazed. That which you sow, he said, I can multiply. God. Prepare to be amazed, beloved. In 2020, woo, God will do it. Mm, whatever it is. We have no one need not only to be convinced, we have no one need to wonder whether Christ indeed is God. We have proof positive that he's God. Ain't got to wonder about it. Ain't got to think about it. I know he's God. John the Baptist knew it. He said in first in John 1 29, the next day uh, John see Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. John knew that he was the forerunner. John knew that he was the messenger called to lay the way for the one to come behind him. John said on one occasion that he which was to come after him, glory to God, was preferred before him. John already knew, woo, glory, that he was stepping and being used of God to bring about that which was more wonderful than the work he had tied to his hand. John knew God was going to do it. He said, I'm not worthy to tie his, his to tie his shoes, if you will. I'm not worthy to speak his name. He said, but I'm speaking of that one that will come after me who is greater than me. Oh, God, I thank you for your word. Your word is right, right by itself. John knew it, and John testified to it. There was a man that was possessed of the devil. He knew it because God delivered him and set him free. How many times has God done that which is amazing in your life? You can't explain it. You don't know how it happened. You know he just did it. Yes, thank you, Lord. Well, hold on to your seats, beloved. Prepare to be amazed in 2020. God will do it. Whatever <coughs> it is. The man who was possessed in Mark 1 and 27, they were all dead. And so that they questioned among themselves, saying, what thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority and commandment, he even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. Yes. Amen. The man with, amen, an unclean spirit, possessed of the devil, God allowed him to let him know that this is me. I'm the Christ, and there's none like me. Amen. Also picked up in Mark 5 and 20, the same man. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. Uh, amen. They scratched their head because they knew this man was possessed. And yet he spoke of the wonder and the majesty of Jesus Christ. Saying, this must be God. Yes, thank you. Prepare to be amazed, beloved. God will do it in 2020. Whatever you need in 2020, God will do it. Oh, God, I thank you. The disciples knew it because the Lord had proved himself to them many 
times. He fed them several times in multitudes. 4,000 at one time, 5,000 at one time, not counting men, women, men and uh, women and children. He did it on several occasions, letting them know that he had the capacity to bless what he blessed and curse what he cursed. The disciples marveled at who he was. They didn't realize whose presence they were in. And the Lord had to let them know, listen, I'm not just a wonder I'm God. I'm not just a wonder I'm able to do what I promise. I'm not just a wonder. I'm not just a feeling. I'm not just something you wear and take off. He said, I'm God. Amen. And if you put your trust in me, be prepared to be amazed, beloved. Yeah, thank in 2020. You. Woo, God, I thank you. Thank God you. will do it. Look what he said here to the disciples. Mark 6 and 49. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it to have been a spirit and cried out. But they all saw him and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them and said unto them, Be of good cheer in his eye. Woo, glory. Be not afraid. And he went up in the mountain, he went up unto them in the ship, and the wind ceased, and they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure. And the Bible said, and wonder. God is more than a wonder. He may be a wonder worker, but he's God anyhow. God does what he does. The disciples were amazed. In Matthew 8, 27, the same incident is picked up. He said, but the men marveled, saying, what man? A man is this. He's more than a man. He's God man. Amen. He's more than just God. He's, he's God Almighty. He's sovereign. Yes. And there's no other God like him. Yes, yes. Woo! Glory. He said they marvel said, What manner of man is this? That even the wind and the sea yes. obey him. Yes. He's more than a wonder. Yes. We used to sing a song in the church. He'll work a wonder. Don't wonder about him. He'll work a wonder. Don't wonder about him. But God is more than a wonder. He's God Almighty. Yeah. Woo, prepare to be amazed in 2020, beloved. God is going to push his way around. He's going to show himself sovereign in the universe. 2020, God will do it. Woo, God, whatever it is, God's going to do it. After his resurrection, the angels gave testimony to who he was, how great he is, and the magnitude of his word and his presence. Why? Because he's God. And beside him there is no other. Matthew 28 and 6. When the disciples and the women showed up at the supper cup, the angels themselves from heaven had been dispatched by God. Sitting there and waiting there to give testimony that this indeed is God. Amen. He says, listen, he is not here, for he is risen. And I love this, as he said, he is risen like he told you, I'm going to, uh, uh, listen, give my life for mankind because I have the capacity to do it. No man takes my life. I give my life freely of my own accord. I lay myself down. I take myself back up, and as he had said, he said, meet me in Galilee. Glory to God. I have all authority in my hand. He said, listen, he's done it by the voice of the angel, by the testimony of the angelic. He said, he's done what he said. He's risen as he said he would be. He's God. Oh, God, I thank you. What more testimony do we need? What more evidence do we need? He's God. He got up of his own accord. Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. He got up of his own strength. And the, and the angel said, listen, he said what he said. Look where he used to lay. Mm. He lays there no more. Oh, God, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Even when the other ones came, another occasion, another account, and Mark says, listen, Mark 16 and 6, and he said unto him, be not afraid. Don't be afraid. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He's risen. He's not here. Behold the place where they lay him. Yes. Be prepared to be amazed 
in 2020, God will do it. Yes, he will. Whatever it is, God has a plan. God has a purpose. After the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost fell and there was such a revival. Souls were saved. Folk were releasing their goods so that they'd have enough substance to be sustained and maintained. But under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, yes. folk began to humble themselves, surrender their hearts, because the power came as it had never come before. God showed himself mighty. Mm. An angelic messenger was sent to Mary and Joseph. Demons trembled at the very name of Jesus Christ. Everywhere Jesus went, folk were being healed, yeah. being delivered, right. being set free. Jesus went into one town and healed everybody. Yes. Yes, he did. Prepare to be amazed. Everywhere he went, he made an impact. One woman crawled, if you will, on her belly. I can be amazed. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. If I can just touch what touches him, yes, yes. my life you, will yes, be changed. You, Jesus turned around and said, who touched me? The disciples said, look at all these folk on top of you. Everybody's touching you. But he said, uh, somebody touched me. Yes, that's right. In faith, believing. Because I am he. Oh, glory to God. And there's none beside me. Amen. God healed her instantly. Thank you, Lord. Be prepared to be amazed. Be amazed. In 2020, yes, yes, yes. God will do it. Whatever it is. Oh, God, I thank you for your word. As I was meditating on this, and looking at the text here, it is ironic, if you will, that the disciples were still not convinced, not. even though they seen the testimony of Lazarus, who had laid in the grave for over three days or more. And when they went, they thought he was sick, and Jesus said, no, he's dead. And then when he arrived, only one of the sisters recognized, one was a little upset, and said, Lord, if you had been here, he wouldn't have died. Another sister said, listen, the fact that you're here, even now, oh, God, I thank you, because I recognize, God, your authority. Yes, yes, yes. And you're not just a wonder, glory to God. You're not just a miracle worker. You're not just a prophet. You're God. And if even now, if you say it, That's right. it's got to be so. Yes, yes. If you say it, Thank you, Lord. it's got to come to pass. Yes. Woo, Lord. So that which you have on the altar right now, from 2019, some stuff that's still burning on the altar, trust God for the promise to come to pass in 2020. Hmm. Be prepared. Be prepared for it. Be prepared to be amazed that God will do above your expectations. Because you can only expect here. God is unlimited in his expectations. And the disciples, after all this, still did not comprehend the magnitude and the glory and the presence to whom they were in. And even it is declared in Acts the second chapter, when Jesus ascended to his father, God had to send angelic messengers because they stood there gazing at him who had been with them. They were with me for over three and a half years and still didn't realize that he was going to leave. He said, I got to go away because if I don't go away, I'm not sending the refresher or the comforter. Yeah, yeah. And yet they stood there gazing in the air as if he wasn't going away or as if he was going to come back right away. The angel said, why 
and prepare to be amazed. Woo! Glory! My, my, my. Prepare. Prepare. For the unusual. Prepare for the supernatural. Yeah. Prepare. Prepare for the glory when you put your trust in him. Yeah. Oh God, I thank you, thank you. for your word. Prepare to be amazed in 2020. Mm. God will do it. Amen. The, God, the disciples should have prepared themselves to be amazed. God, who is invisible mm. and supernatural, expects believers and them that seek after him to be amazed. Amen. I expect the impossible. I expect the supernatural. The Bible says that with men we're limited, but with God all things are possible. Yeah, yeah. So I expect God to honor his word. It's not man's word, but God's word. It's not man's promise, but God's promise. I expect God to honor it. And if God has dropped a nugget in your spirit, and if God has caused you to be drawn, amen, to his presence, God says, listen, prepare to be amazed in 2020, beloved, because what I plan to do, you've never seen before. You can't even imagine it. The Bible says in Corinthians, listen, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have it entered in the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. So God has some amazing things prepared for me. Yes. And my mind can't comprehend them. But my spirit continually releases to me that they're mine. Yes. Woo! Glory. Thank so you. I'm waiting for the unexpected. Glory God! I'm waiting for the supernatural. I'm waiting for that which I cannot comprehend because God is a God who is amazing. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. And what he has promised, he will, by his authority, because he's God, bring it to pass. God says, I mean, the word of God says in three, in Ephesians 3 and 1, now unto him yeah. mm, that is able to do exceedingly Abundantly. I don't even know what that means, but that's got to be amazing. Exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. God says, I'm able to do the amazing in your life exceedingly and abundantly above all. Listen now, beloved, you got to get this. Above all you can ask, you couldn't ask enough for it and receive it. Abundantly. Exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think. Not only could you not ask for it, you wouldn't even think about it. So God said, listen, be prepared for the amazing in 2020. Yes. Because God says, what I plan to do in your life you haven't even thought about yet. What I plan to do in your life, you haven't even asked for it. Oh God, I'm so glad he searches the heart because God knows things that I don't know. The Bible says that the Holy Ghost is such a sovereign uh, 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 authority in our life that he prays for us concerning things that concern us that we don't know. But therefore, beloved, be prepared to be amazed in 2020 because God will do it. Acts 2 and 16. And this is that. This is that. Which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Mark God's words. Be prepared to be amazed 
is in 2020 because God will do it. Amen. God bless you.